Order, the Honourable Annette King. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My questions to the Prime Minister. In light of his statement of the 9th of February 2010 that, quote, I worry that there are signs of an emerging underclass in New Zealand, end quote, what action has his government taken to reduce the number of children living in poverty since that statement? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, the government believes that paid employment is the best way out of poverty for children and families. This year we have been working hard to create jobs and grow family incomes by strengthening the New Zealand economy and repairing the damage done by a global recession and nine sad years of a Labor government. We have continued to run substantial deficits to fund social services that support children and families, including in vital areas such as education and health uh, for income support payments like working for families. The Honourable Anne Atkin. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. What is his definition of an underclass in New Zealand? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. It's a New, it's a New Zealander where the rungs of the, on the ladder of opportunity are broken. The Honourable Anne Supplementary Anne Atkin. question, Mr Speaker. Has he read... Has he read the comments? Has he read the comments from UNICEF who say that quote the overall picture painted by the updated 2010 Children's Social Health Monitor is deeply concerning that so many of our children are admitted to hospital with illnesses associated with socio-economic deprivation is a wake-up call for all New Zealanders. If so, does he agree with those comments? The right honourable Speaker, Prime Minister. No, no. The Honourable Annette King. Supplementary question. Is he prepared to set targets for the eradication of child poverty in New Zealand as urged by the Every Child Counts organisation? If not, why not? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, Mr Speaker, no, but what I am prepared to do is uh, commit government resources to trying to lift children out of poverty. I think there are a number of things we can do there. Firstly, making sure that every child has a decent education. And of course, national standards is an important step uh, in that regard. Making sure that uh, we do reform welfare so so many young New Zealanders aren't trapped on welfare uh, dependency, as has been the case, obviously, uh, under Labor. Making sure that we have innovative ways of tackling these areas. And, of course, Whanau Ora is a great example of that. I could go on, but, of course, we've got the adjournment debate sometime tomorrow, and members will want to go home tomorrow evening. The Honourable Ann King. Supplementary question. Did he read the recent article in the Challenge Weekly newspaper by... Garth George, a strong advocate of the Prime Minister and the National Party, who said the measure of society's soul is the way it treats vulnerable members, children, and on this measure we fail miserably, and the gap between rich and poor is still widening rather than closing, depriving many of the right to live even a subsistence life and forcing many to work so hard that family life is non-existent. If so, does he agree with him? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. No, I didn't see the article. Yes, I agree with parts of what he said. The Honourable Annette King. Does he agree with Presbyterian Support, an organisation that has been working for 100 years in the community, which asks, how can a small, relatively well-off country like New Zealand allow such a generous ration of misery for so many when on face value there should be more than enough to go round, end quote. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, actually on face value I agree with Presbyterian Support Services and I think the question we have to ask ourselves as a country is how do we address that issue? It's an important issue. One of the things we need to do is deliver opportunity for those kids because being poor doesn't rob you of hope. Uh, what is absolutely required is a decent education. I personally am saddened that for nine years I sat back and watched the Labor government allow more and more and more young New Zealanders leave school unable to read and write properly. I too, if I was a member of that Labor government, would be deeply ashamed at what that Labor government did. I know that they are scared and frightened of their record in that area and embarrassed at this Christmas time, but that unfortunately is their record in office. Chris, supplementary, supplementary question, question the Honourable Annette King. Does he still believe working for families that lifted thousands of children out of poverty in New Zealand is communism by stealth? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, when it faced the very high effective marginal tax rates of nearly up to 100 per cent, yes, and that's why this government changed it dramatically through its tax cuts. New Zealanders who face that are very grateful for that. Supplementary question, Mr. Honourable Annette King. Did, did, he say, did he say to a delegation of church leaders whom he met in late November to discuss the future of welfare in New Zealand, quote, 
If we cancel welfare for 330,000 people currently on welfare, how many would starve to death, bugger all, end quote? And if so, does he stand by that stupid comment? Yeah, right um, I've comments. no recollection of the comment. Well, I do have a recollection of... Well, no, if you want to hear the answer, let me finish. I do actually have a recollection of two things. Uh, one is quite an extensive conversation about how we might reform welfare, and the second was one of those church leaders who made a very offensive statement, and I had to correct him about that. Question number eight, Jonathan Young. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.